And so, the Lord returns. Welcome back to a, uh, a different kind of format. So this is another episode of Quotes Quotes, as you can tell, but it's kind of going to be a hodgepodge of different topics. I'm not just going to cover one topic, write a script about it. We're going to use this format now where I'm just talking to you face to face, and I'm literally just going to let my mind flow. So let's get started with where have I been as far as YouTube is concerned. So obviously, um, in prior videos, I wanted to make my YouTube content uh, very formal, very edited, uh, with a lot of good scripting, a lot of just good gameplay to go with it. However, it just requires way too much work on my end, not only just from like an editing perspective, purely from like a scheduling thing, because I still want to prioritize Twitch. Twitch gets me, honestly, the most enjoyment out of my interaction with you guys, and it's also the easiest way for people to come to me on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, not to mention, uh, I'm a part of a stream team, uh, Apex.gg. For those of you who are Team Apex, for those of you who are familiar, no, we're not playing Battle Royale. No, we don't really play the game Apex Legends. But just know that it's Big Fry TV, American Riot, and myself. So that's where that's why my focus has been on Twitch. That's why my focus has been on the stream because that's just where I enjoy making the most content. Now, as far as creating content why has there not been specifically sandstorm content uploaded to youtube and the question is and i mean and the answer is very simple i haven't had a reason to there's not really been anything that's been added to the game to up the player count and competitive <clears throat> excuse me there's not been an update really to up the player count specifically in competitive and that's a big deal um especially for somebody like me, because that's what I thrive on. That's what I enjoy doing. That's kind of what my entire Quode persona is based around. Like, forget the Lord portion. Like, Quode is a PvP specialist. Like, that is me. That is what my personality has always been. Um, it is adapted over the years, but at its core, it's been PvP-oriented at some sort of competitive, competitive level. And... Because there hasn't been anything in the game to kind of stimulate that, I haven't really felt the need to record anything for YouTube to cover that. Because that's the content that interests me, is competitive-related content. Um, but after this past weekend, that might actually change. So let's... This past weekend has quite simply been the most fun, in a surprising way, from a non-playing perspective that I've had in a long time. Uh, this past weekend actually saw the inaugural... Uh, REL, which is Rhodes Entertainment League, uh, tournament that was actually done for Sandstorm, and that tournament went swimmingly. It was the first ever tournament with a prize pool with rostered teams for Sandstorm, and honestly, it was a pleasure. The teams that came out, which would be like NRT, CYG, RG, Five, uh, FA, uh, FB, BDB. Um, you know, all these teams that came out and put on a great show, I really can't put into words how much I appreciate them. And since that's kind of what this video is also going to slide into, let's talk about this tournament. So this tournament offered a cash prize pool of 150 US dollars. Now, at the time of this recording, it is Tuesday and the finals were played on Sunday. So in the time between the finals and now, uh, the winning teams have already received their payment, which is already like a huge quote K from me. Like that is what you want to see when you're talking about online leagues is you want to see good quality teams play. You want to see obviously some sort of reward for those teams and you would hope that they receive what they're promised within a just amount of time. So not only was there a cash prize involved with this tournament, but also there were there was a surprising level of smoothness to the operation. Now, as the caster myself, um, I was responsible for not only trying to keep the, you know, the, the commentary matching with the gameplay, but I was also supposed to like help the downtime, um, help entertain during the downtime. I should be more specific there. And actually it went a lot better than I thought it would. It wasn't nearly as difficult as I imagined and we didn't have nearly as much downtime as I would have expected from a first, <laughs> from a first event coming from an organization that kind of just sprung up out of nowhere, to at least to most people's eyes. And that's a huge plus. The tournament ran in a double elimination format, and which for, for, for a tournament of that size where, you know, it's pretty much only like, like six invite teams, you know, for this inaugural event, you know, that 
actually is pretty good. Like double elimination, I think, helps weed out not only the, the teams who don't have any sort of flexibility in terms of map pool, but also it helps show which teams have the durability and the consistency and the drive to kind of push on. Um, so for this early stage, I think the double elimination worked great. Um, in the future, I could imagine them playing with maybe some Swiss system or like a variation of like a season format to determine seedings. But the way they went about it actually was really interesting. They actually had the players themselves from all the teams vote for their rankings. So basically all of the teams ranked themselves and that's how the uh, seats for the tournament were determined now going off of that so let's talk about some of the stories that oh sorry let's continue first before i get to the stories the narratives that came out of the tournament let's talk about let's finish off the format so whereas a lot of people who are familiar with sandstorm know about the vgls format which is at present it's a season format where uh, a map is played and the maps are played uh, first to 11. So that's a best of 20. So you so like the most number of rounds that could be played would be like, a, like an 11-9. Or if there's overtime, which would be like a 10-10, then there would be overtime on top of that. Uh, the way the teams decide sides is via pistols. So no nades, no any of that, but pistols running around uh, the Bravo objective, if I recall correctly. Um, but for this tournament, they decided, the REL decided to kind of simplify the process by um, doing a best of three match so every match was a best of three and the maps themselves were played to a best of 15 so that means that the first team that made it to eight rounds won the map and honestly the pacing felt pretty good because one thing you have whenever you have these best of 20 maps is that it's a lot of rounds to play with so it offers a lot of opportunity for comebacks but at this stage of the game there's really not that many teams that are at the same level like Usually the better team just kind of runs away with it. And if the teams are evenly matched, you may get like an 11-7 or 11-6, but it's still a pretty sizable like round count difference. Um, and sometimes you still get 11-0s. And honestly, watching a team that's just like heads and shoulders better than the other team just rovel stomp for 11 straight rounds, it's not the most pleasant experience if I'm, if I'm being completely honest here. Um, neither as a viewer, nor as a caster, nor as a player, honestly. Like, if you're getting raffle stomped for 11 straight rounds, so your starting side, you get wrecked 10 straight rounds, like, there's not a fucking thing you can do about it, you know? You just go into the next half, like, you really don't give a fuck at that point, right? Like, you've already lost 10 straight rounds, um, and that's just one map. Then you gotta, like, if there's a best of three series, like, you see what I mean? The pacing is just, was just too long for a best of 20 for what this tournament wanted to accomplish. And honestly... Uh, there was some really good, there was some really good gameplay that came out of it, and I'll and I'll explain why. So the reason for the best of three right out the gate was because we wanted to kind of showcase different maps and showcase different teams' play styles. Um, we let the teams choose their maps. Obviously, they did a ban ban pick pick kind of system. So basically, uh, team A like they flip a coin. Team A would ban first. Other team would ban second, and then the team that uh, got to ban second would pick first um, but the team that didn't get to pick first would get to choose a starting side so it's kind of like a ban ban pick pick choose choose format and it made it a lot simpler to just get straight into the gun rounds and you know the stronger team obviously you would think you know if you're the team that picks map a you would assume that to be your strong map so if team if if the second team chooses you know the b side of that map then that if that's a strong side but you're the better team you should still be able to win on side a um so it, i think in that sense the format was pretty balanced we got games out really quickly um all the games were moderated even if they weren't being shoutcasted they were being moderated somebody that had direct archon to the server that way um they could automatically take care of round restarts or pauses or anything like that um that way the teams could just focus on what they wanted which is the game which is focused on their playing and i thought this was really cool i was really pleased with how it turned out i was also very pleased with the reception uh, the teams seem to receive uh, the format pretty well obviously there's some little hiccups here and there and again a little bit of server issues here and there but again because there was staff on hand like it was pretty easy to just rotate like switch to a new server adjust the score and start off fresh um so that was kind of that was kind of a plus um as far as the spectating function goes i'll speak from personal experience the spectating was a little better than the last event i casted which was back in december i think it was um 
the spectator function just seemed heads and shoulders better than what it had previously, if I'm being completely honest. The the ability to pull up the scoreboard and then click on a player and immediately go to them on the attack map, that was really nice. Um, I would have preferred to have a different overlay. I think that the brackets around the player's names didn't really fit um, for all the situations that, as a caster, I needed to be able to work the cameras for. But it was a small inconvenience, and it'll be it'll be, be adapted uh, and changed for the uh, next event. But, yeah, so the format... I don't know. I, I wasn't too displeased with this. I feel like I feel like the format will be altered as time goes on, maybe as we get more teams, because double elimination for that many teams will probably be a huge pain. But in the future, there'll probably be qualifiers, you know, qualifying events for these tournaments. So that way, um, that way it kind of keeps the the size of, of teams um, that are playing at a reasonable level and we won't have a um, four day five day long tournament uh, for double elimination so uh, i think that's well i think the double elimination format's still good especially for a two-day event it gives teams a chance to redeem themselves it also gives teams um it kind of rewards teams who have that steady drive so like even if they had a bad first game if that gets them ramped up kicks them into gear and they're able to play their way through the loser's bracket as happened this tournament uh they have a chance to fight in the finals so Let's talk about that. Let's talk about let's talk about a couple of the teams that uh, made. Let's just talk about the top four. Let's talk about the teams that made it to the top four. So we got to talk about obviously. Uh, so that'll be five alive, BB, uh, Flashbang, and Regicide. Um, we'll go ahead and start with uh, third and fourth. So let's talk about BDB and uh, five alive. Honestly, so five alive is comprised of a bunch of different veterans. Like it's a bunch of veterans from Insurgency Source. They came together. And they made this, and they made a, a sandstorm team. And honestly, I feel like they underperformed. I feel like their performance didn't match what their experience level and skill set would lead you to believe. So, but from watching, I would say that generally speaking, it just kind of felt like maybe there's not. I don't know if it was a practice thing because I mean I haven't been too into the scene as far as like which teams are scrimming who or what the kind of scene you know. I'm not there to see like okay these players are always online and playing like oh this team's always playing together or screaming like so disclaimer i'm not gonna claim to know shit that being said five alive didn't really seem to have anything set there were no set pieces that i saw that were consistent like there was a lot of try this lane try that lane let's try this let's try this let let's go with this loadout let's rotate to this side like very rarely did i see the same people playing the same spots and the timings just across the map didn't seem to gel to me communication seemed all right like there, there were a lot of like um rotates and responses that were, were promising from them but i don't know what the issue was but it, they really seemed like if i had to give you a visual it was almost as if like they were water that were just being poured out of the glass like onto the rock in different spaces and every single round they'd fill back up and they would just kind of be poured on the rock and just splash in different directions but never really able to get into and past the rock um, that being the other team's defense, usually, um, there was there was a game, there was a round, a matchup that they won because they just had like better gun skill. But for the most part, I didn't really feel like, I don't know, I, I it just didn't feel like whatever chemistry is there translated on the map, like on the server. Um, and so they went out, they made it to they made it to the semis, but that was that was as far as they got. Uh, BDB was another team that came in. And honestly, they looked really strong at the start. Um, I I can't remember. I think it was Berg. Uh, Berg is a name that's popped in my head anyways. Berg had really good games all throughout. But they probably had, like, the best starting strats, I think, of, like, the teams that went out in the semis. Like, BDB had really good starting strats. They had really good ideas and really good objective presence. Um Honestly, their getting knocked out was kind of a surprise. Their consistency, I think, started to falter um, in the semis when Regicide came up. Because let, let me be clear, Regicide was a completely different team round one than they were in round three or four, whatever round that was. But BDB, I think, showed the most... Um, I would say, like, for their lineup, for their roster, I would say, like, they showed a surprising amount of consistency. Um, there's a lot of areas that they could improve on as individuals, but specifically, I would say that um, 
their consistency like their team play surprised me like i i think i as like a like a caster like i saw the roster and i like kind of under honestly underestimated them when i when like in the round one because but then like they took off round one two and even three like they were just playing really good uh insurgency really good firefight so i i think this roster is going to stay together i could see bdb improving a lot in the future be curious to see what they do at the next tournament that's coming up but bdb ended up putting up a really good show for my money like they were i would say they were easily third place team at that tournament um even though i would have originally on the offset of the tournament put them in second place um but the team that beat them that ended up getting second place and ended up making it to the finals was actually regicide now and here's an interesting storyline with regicide so regicide the very first round of this tournament, they played CYG and got knocked down into losers. Now, that's not exact. And they lost 0-2. It wasn't like they lost 1-2. Like, they lost 0-2. Like, it was it was pretty decisive loss. Um, and so, with the first match that they played, it just, it just didn't feel like things were vibing for them. Like, I could tell that some of the players were starting to let the... I guess, I don't know if it's a pressure. I don't know if it's just like they've been grinding too much Sandstorm, like, the week prior. Because, like, I've seen their names on like on discord like on the dgl discord like on steam i've seen them playing the game i've even even seen them pub stomping and queuing up for comp but i just what what they showed in the first match they played was just like a lot of weakness a lot of um just miscommunications in the mid game uh, they lost a lot of situations they should have won and it, it just it felt like a choke and it just felt like they weren't there they weren't 100 percent uh invested in, in the team play aspect well in the individual aspect because it felt like there's good communication but and when i say the team aspect i mean the rotation so they were, they were playing very individualistic the first that first matchup fast forward though uh they actually get to rematch cyg because cyg ended up meeting the eventual champions flashbang and CYG got knocked down into the loser's bracket, and Regicide actually got a chance to avenge their loss, and they did. Um, but what was interesting was they chose to rematch. They started off the rematch on the first map of the first match. So they they, they did change up on the second map, but they rematched the first map, and it was a completely different Regicide. Like, Regicide came out, and all the guys like seemed to be more excuse me more attuned with themselves more attuned with the maps and just overall better like better team like they came out and they really surprised me um with how with how quickly like that was a very quick turnaround to like get knocked in the losers right out the gate and suddenly it was just like whoop it was like a fire just kind of got underneath the cheek so to speak and they they took off and that takeoff brought them to success against cyg and then brought them to success against bdb and those were close games like that bdb series that that regicide bdb series was a close series like had i'm i'm willing to say had regicide played a different map for their first map i feel like it would have been a much um like it might not have seemed as close because the map uh, i believe it was uh, precinct or district precinct the district precinct that uh i think that was bdb's pick regicide had no answer really for that map they they really needed a lot of work on um, just their lane management um and just the way that they change their focus from objective to lane and then vice versa a lot of opportunities on that map for regicide to improve on um it was pretty much a shut and it was an open and shut book as far as that map goes the second two maps though were a genuine pleasure to watch they were they were real battles and a lot of it came down to crazy 3ks and 4ks and clutches coming out of individual regicide members who were just in the right place the right time and they were dialed in it, it was really exciting it was really exciting sandstorm to watch um it wasn't exactly it wasn't by any means the cleanest it wasn't the most tactical but it was so fun to watch like the guys like bdb would clutch it would look like they're about to mount like a clutch or a comeback and the regicide guys would just shut it down or would respond in turn with a clutch of their own it was it was really fun it was that 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 matchup was really fun sandstorm to watch um that's the kind of sandstorm i like to see like two teams duking it out they understand the mode they understand their team they understand the enemy team and what's happening and they were just kind of laying down (laughs) laying down their foot on the gas i have no idea how long this video is already but i mean just just remembering the tournament just gets me all excited going and now we go to the winners uh flashbang man what can you say about flashbang flashbang 
played like studs. Like both days they played like studs. Um, they didn't drop a single map. They really didn't even play a game where I felt like they were threatened. Like their match against CYG was like a horribly lopsided affair. Um, like CYG got a couple rounds on both maps, but it was it wasn't close. And then their match against Five Alive, it was kind of a similar story. Like it was just a raffle stomp, it felt like. And then the finals, the first map was actually kind of close. Like I, I will say the scoreline, I mean it was eight to four. But the rounds were scrappy. Like again, credit to Regicide. They were very scrappy. Like they were really dialed in on day two. But Flashbang just there's something about there's something about their chemistry and their their ability to rotate. They have a lot of people that have been playing the game since the beta. They have a lot of people who have been like playing since the beta together and formed uh, Flashbang. And honestly, like I could go on about how Gucci's consistency was there. Like Gucci was by far MVP of this event for me. Like Gucci's consistency was just on point. Like there were times when you'd see Chaco pop off. There were times where you'd see uh, Profi pop off. Like there were times, there were rounds where you'd see um, either Zero, uh, HD Zero, or um, uh, Trauma Junkie. Like any any of the five guys could pop off, but it was Gucci's consistency that really seemed to anchor that team, and it was great. I that's what I want. That's what I've always wanted to see from Sandstorm. Like from competitive Sandstorm was I want to see teams that have a map pool that have like chemistry built into their organization like and into their players as individuals like that's what you want to see um when you're talking about talent and top tier sandstorm talent at that and if this tournament is any sort of uh litmus test to measure by i think the future for sandstorm is actually going to be a lot better than what i had previously thought in my head so there's a there's obviously a lot more teams that are probably going to join the fray, uh, especially in this next tournament. The prize pool has actually been upped, so the bot the way that they the way that the league seems to be generating the the prize pool is they're basically allowing the, the they're having teams buy in for the tournament, but it's a good prize pool. Like the winning team is winning back almost like eight hundred, like eight times what they put in. So the prize pool is four hundred. And the teams are only having to put in fifty, so they're so the top team is going to get back eight times what they what they put in, and I think that's going to be really attractive to some of the more competitive players out there, because it's easy to say like oh like for the first tournament especially it's easy to say like oh that's just one hundred fifty dollars like yeah we only put in like ten dollars but like that's that's really not worth the time or whatever but four hundred dollars like I think. I think that may attract a couple really competitive players to kind of come out of the woodwork, so to speak, and uh, start start really competing. And I think that's what everybody wants to see. I think everybody wants to see more firefight teams, like more consistency, like coming out of the scene. So, but let me feel free to let me know if, what you guys think about competitive sandstorm. If you feel like um, the league should even be promoting it the way it is or how you feel about any teams like do you think there's any players that or any dream teams that you can think of out of the league obviously this is more for the viewers who are from that competitive scene but personally i i have a lot of ideas in my head of ideal dream teams but i think that i might save that for a future video Probably, probably not even the next one. It'll be a future video once the scene is a little more established and we have a lot more rosters to kind of pick and choose from. Uh, but that might be something we talk about in the future. But this has been fun. As usual, you guys can find me on Twitter. Make sure you guys follow me on Twitter. That's where I post most of my updates nowadays. Um, if you don't have, if you don't have a Twitter or you're not following me on Twitter, at least join the Discord. You can join my Discord. That way, you can get live updates from me. You can even interact with me, like on a quicker basis than just this, these youtube videos and then of course the twitch streams if you're online and you see that i'm streaming just pop by i'll be there the lord looks out for his people anyways that's all for today's episode of quotes quotes or should i say this week's <laughs> no I'll, I'll be better about this guys uh and let me know how you like this new format with me talking to you guys face to face and yeah this is just kind of a new video format that i'll be going with a lot more often here in the future so until next time Make sure you rest well, recharge, and enjoy peace of mind. Cheers.